Hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. Anthony here. And James here. Today is movie news number 40. Lots to talk about. Let's begin with the box office. So obviously, the Batman came out last week and absolutely decimated everything at the box office. It made $134 million its opening weekend. It's up to $300 million global total, which is a ton of money. Uh, Uncharted, it made $11 million last weekend. It's up to $275 million global. Dog made $6 million last weekend, up to $50 million total. And then Spider-Man still pulled in $4 million. Last weekend, it's up to $1.8 billion, So that's still making money every day. Uh, right. Our recent episodes were on The Godfather, The Godfather Part 2. We also did our roast, which posted. And we also did a mini review Anthony did of Apocalypto, which posted yesterday or yesterday. on Saturday, on, which is cool. Yeah. And now, to begin, there's two big things of news, I think, to start off with. The first is... DC unsurprisingly pushed back a lot of their movies. So despite releasing the DC Heroes trailer <laughs> at the beginning of the year and getting everyone so excited, uh, and we had Black Adam coming out, we had The Flash coming out, we had The Aquaman coming out, they pushed everything back. Uh, they pushed Shazam forward. Shazam 2 are getting that in 2022, but Black Adam's been pushed to October. Flash has been pushed to June 2023. Uh, so I think they have to do a bunch of new... They're probably doing reshoots and a ton of new CGI. Aquaman also got pushed to 2023, which is just typical DC, DCEU fashion. Just everything's getting delayed again. I mean, The Flash was supposed to come out in 2018, which I understand COVID and coronavirus held, held that for like two years. But I mean, plenty of movies have come out since that started. And 2023, I'm assuming they they have to do a bunch of reshoots. I'm assuming they're fixing a lot of CGI because, I mean, six extra months, I think, that they're at, or however many and Almost months six months, yeah. Of production that they're going to put into it now. And this could be either two things because it could either refer to heavy reshoots and changing the films or what their excuses that they're they're giving, which is, I mean, you can always say they're, they might be just being lying to the to the press saying that it's just they need extra time for visual effects. That's what they said. Yeah, that's what they on. said. And I'm just, I don't know about that. I mean, all these movies are still getting made effects wise, like in-house during covid um, lots of movies were still doing pre-production during even the most intense days of the lockdowns. And so I'm not sure if that is totally believable. Either either, either the films are not performing well for the studio execs and they want to change things. And test audiences. Yeah, test audiences. Or they have like some crazy new idea and they're reshooting footage to um, go into that new idea they have of maybe doing a team up or some kind of crossover and so maybe they're changing storylines and threads and scenes around to adhere to that the cgi thing i think is just total bs because you released the dc heroes trailer this year and it's only march 12th 13th it played during the batman yeah so it literally just played a week ago during the batman so like why would you have that released if you thought you would need to do six extra months of cgi come on yeah come on i'm not we're sure not, I, we're not, I'm not dumb. buying it we're not idiots. And then uh, the the Warner Brothers uh, president, he was like, we can't wait to to bring Shazam as a Christmas present to families this December. Oh, it's yeah. Like, Come on. It's all They're I just want tying for Christmas you with a bow. Shazam tying too. you with a bow. Shazam's a nice movie. It's cool. <laughs> like, uh, The Flash is what everyone wants to see. Like, it, let's be honest. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I buy it. And Black Adam, but it's pretty silly. Uh, next bit of news is really big. It's the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer, which just got its first teaser. Got a look at... Ewan McGregor returning. We see Joel Edgerton returning as Uncle Owen. He's in Attack of the Clones and also Revenge of the Sith, the Australian actor. So it's so cool to see him reprise that role. We got an image of Hayden Christensen. He's not in the teaser. We also have some new characters. It seems like a couple, couple new big baddies, the uh, Inquisitors, the the something Inquisitor, and then Rava the Inquisitor. Yeah, I'm not, we don't, I'm not we don't know. <laughs> I don't know a ton of Star Wars lore, but they look like interesting characters. Although fans have not been happy with the looks of the prosthetics and makeup of those characters. There's oh, been really? a lot of uh, negative feedback online um, because the the guy with the big white head and the red stripes, he looks kind of silly. That's the, I think, Grand Inquisitor? Yeah, So, but the animated version, he's much more scary looking and intimidating looking. And so fans aren't happy with how he looks in the in the show. But the show looks like it's going to yeah. be a good time. I mean, we love Obi-Wan. He's one of the best characters in the Star Wars universe. And it's, it's so cool to see Ewan come back as the character. The hair looks great. The yeah, beard the looks beard great. Looks solid. He's yeah. just creeping on little Luke with the binoculars, which would be weird without context. But... <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to check it out. <laughs> there was also a new tra trailer released for Chris Pratt's new Amazon Prime show, The Terminalist, 
which is going to be streaming on Amazon very soon. This is about uh, a group of uh, Navy SEALs who get into some high octane military action. Sign me up. I'm ready to watch this. There is a trailer for a new documentary on Tony Hawk called Tony Hawk until the wheels fall off. This is coming to HBO and HBO Max in April. So if you love skateboarding, if you grew up playing Tony Hawk video games like we did and just think skateboarding is cool as hell, this is one of the greatest skateboarders of all time. Yeah. So uh, that should be pretty cool. Looks looks great. And then uh, Ryan Reynolds revealed that the director for the next Deadpool movie, Deadpool 3, will be Sean Levy, who just directed him in Free Guy and The Adam Project. He also directed Hugh Jackman's um, Real Steel movie, The Boxing Robots, remember? Mm -hmm. So he directed that film as well. And he... Ryan Reynolds announced it by making this funny mock-up of a poster of the Adam Project with both Deadpool and Logan standing in it. And so, Free Guy. And Free Guy, so very funny. And speaking of the Adam Project, it just got released this past week on Netflix. It's currently on Rotten Tomatoes, a 69% critic score, 81% audience score, and IMDb has it at a 7.0. We have not had the chance to check it out, but I think we'll try to watch it this week. Next up... For fans of Guy Ritchie's movie, The Gentleman, there is a series in production. The nego negotiations are in way with Netflix to adapt the show into a TV series. Not sure if any of the main cast members from the film will be going into the series, but we love that movie, and to see that on, on TV would be a lot of fun. Yeah, love love The Gentleman. Now we have some Dune news. <laughs> Let's go. Some Dune. So first up, Florence Pugh is in talks to be cast as Princess Aralon in Dune Part 2. Also, Austin Butler is in talks to be cast as Fied Rautha in Dune Part 2, who will be the main antagonist to Paul Atreides. In the book, Fied Rautha is pre prevalent throughout the entire book, even the opening sequences and stuff with, with Baron Harkonnen. However, I think Denis did a, it was a wise decision to save Fied for the second film for part two to make it more of a better like villain experience i think for audiences and you this this seems like a good sign that these will go into um signs the deals will be signed because when news is announced like this that someone's in talks that means the contracts are being negotiated yeah so that means it's confirmed that they are working on the contracts right now for both of these actors so i think it's pretty solid to expect both these actors to be cast in these roles and i saw people were like like not sure about the austin butler casting i'm sure he had a fantastic audition because Doom Part 1 was so well cast and Denis great at casting. I think it's going to be... I, I trust in Denis 100%. So, I'm, uh, I'm sure Denis has seen Elvis. Too. Yeah, he's probably seen Elvis. He's And obviously he's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But I'm telling you, he probably blew them away with an audition. It's yeah. perfect for the role. Must be. Because filmmakers, they actually get to see um, movies before anyone else for situations like this. An unproven actor. He, I'm sure um, the director of Elvis, uh, uh, Baz Luhrmann, showed him the film and was like, okay, this guy can act. And then also with Dune, Denis Villeneuve says that an adaptation of Dune, Messiah, might come after Dune Part 2. So this is the second book in the Frank Herbert six-book uh, six franchise, and it's continuing the story of Paul Atreides. So, but he's 100% focused on Part 2 at the time, and these movies are enormous monsters to make. So it's just like a thought that he's having. Like, yeah, maybe, but let's see if I survive Dune Part 2, mm -hmm. and then if I'm feeling like I can do Part 3 with Messiah, then I'll do it, which would be really cool. Mm -hmm. Matthew Vaughn has a new film coming out called Argyle. It will be on Apple TV, and it's going to star Henry Cavill as a secret agent, and they released the first photo on Henry Cavill's Instagram. He showed a photo of him and Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa dancing together. You got it the second time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people are freaking out because he's got like uh, his hair is like the flag top, flag, flat top spiked yeah. up hair. And everyone's like, oh, they did him dirty. <laughs> it's like he needs to look different. You yeah, know? His hair has been the same for 10 years. Yeah, he needs yeah. a different look. Yeah. Uh, there's the first image for the National, tre tre the National <laughs> Treasure TV series or is it a TV movie? TV series. Uh, it reveals the next generation of treasure hunters. <laughs> And it's just like these four kids in a prison cell. One of them has a smartphone. It's like, what's going on here? Where's Nick Cage? Why, why, yeah. why do we have to do this without our man? Yeah. Um, I, I guess this is just what happens in Hollywood now. And this, is what, this is what streaming is doing. They're just turning everything into a TV show and, and then erasing the people who made the, the movies great. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> What, what, about, what I don't like especially about it is, first of all, no Nick Cage, but also the cast is just like four very attractive young people. Like they're all beautiful, like model types. And like, this is like our treasure hunters. And it's like, I just want Nick Cage to- With just, his bad hair. Yeah, with his, 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 his terrible hair. And, and cheesy one-liners. But his, he's just so likable. 
He's just amazing. Oh, well. Hello, Laura. <laughs> Marvel has released three new character posters for its upcoming show, Moon Knight. And each character, each poster demonstrates an example of Moon Knight's three archetype personalities. Uh, one, I don't know much about the character. I just know that he has uh, multiple personalities after the uh, Egyptian god gives him power. So he has his original personality, then the Moon Knight personality, and then the third personality. I'm not sure what it is, but it's that one in the uh, the vest in the, looks cool. the mask. So it's interesting to see there will be three main personalities battling probably for control of his persona. And this is the second time that Oscar Isaac has gotten superpowers from an, an Egyptian <laughs> god because it happened it's in true. X-Men. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Type, he's, a, he's just typecast these days as, <laughs> Egyptian as, a, god. as a character that has to get power from Egyptian gods. It's always going to be Oscar <laughs> Another Isaac. Another one. <laughs> Another Oscar Isaac Egyptian god power storyline. Here we go. <laughs> Can't wait. Looks How about some range, Oscar? Looks very cool. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding we love oscar he's great um anthony Starr from the boys who plays homelander was arrested on assault charges while filming on location guy Ritchie's new movie in spain and I, I guess he broke a bottle over a chef's head and got arrested but he's avoiding jail time and paid a fee a fine and a fee to the victim Wow, that's so cr- like he, he, he broke a bottle off the guy's head. Yeah, head? he drunkenly like was like berating him, then broke a bottle of his head. I don't know all the details, but so like, he's just like his real character. So he's, he's Homelander, he's yeah, like the character minus the laser eye vision. <laughs> yeah, he's Ma- mass he's, murders. He's a Superman one, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a yeah. Wow, that's Super crazy. Villain. Relax, bro. Get, I think his celebrity's getting to his head. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably method acting too much. <laughs> that's horrible. What he did, terrible. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer has added another great cast member, Matthias Schwiegelfer. Uh, I hope I said that correctly. He was the locksmith in Army of the Dead. He also got his own spin off movie, um, Something of the Dead. I can't remember on Netflix what no, it was. No, it was called. like something to do with opening safes. Yeah. It was, yeah. Um, not is not something of the, was it? Yeah, it was something of that. I can check. You keep double talking. check. Yeah, but uh, he was a very uh, vibrant personality in that movie. I think he was a scene stealer. Uh, very uh, also also he directed ca- it. Oh, he directed that spinoff. Yeah, he directed oh, cool. the spinoff too. Also cast in Oppenheimer is Josh Peck. Just got cast in a supporting role as well. And um, Army of Thieves. Army of Thieves. Thank you. So I got it incorrect. Yeah. Look at your smile. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that smile. I'm not. No, I, 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 I've never seen you so happy I saw in my funny, life. I saw a funny meme. That's I've never I'm seen smiling. you more happy in your life. <laughs> no, you should have seen me eating ice cream last night. That was pretty happy. Sorry, continue what you're saying. I was done. Oh, well, I wasn't listening. Like always. But this cast is absolutely absurd. And can't wait to see it. Uh, next up, we have the first image of Pinocchio, the live action film, not the animated stop-motion movie from Guillermo del Toro, the, the, the live-action one, which is starring Tom Hanks, directed by Robert Zemeckis. And he is Geppetto, and it's an image of Geppetto with the iconic puppet of Pinocchio. It looks, it looks, like, a Disney, <laughs> looks like a Disney movie. <laughs> I, Zemeckis is great, though, so we'll see what he pulls yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, but still, it's a Disney movie. Uh, st- big streaming news. Fresh was released on Hulu and has become a hit on the app. This film stars Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar Jones, and we will be reviewing this film later this week. James will James be reviewing will be doing it. it, yes. And I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And yeah, I'll, I'll be, you know, it was a cool concept. I'll give them that. Um, so streaming also, uh, I'll just do something new. I want to share with you the top 10 shows on streaming platforms according to Nielsen's SVOD rankings. So number one, Reachers, the first time an Amazon show was the number one streamed SVOD provider show. So that's streaming video on demand show. So like an original, not like like a TV show that gets put on. Like, you know mm, what I mean? Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, not like if Breaking Bad was on Netflix. Oh, so like it, it did better than even like Marvelous Miss Maisel did? Like mo- shows exactly, like that? Yeah. So it. Reacher's number one. It has 1.5 billion minutes watched. And then Sweet Magnolias, which is net- Netflix, Ozark, Inventing Anna. Inventing Anna had a huge opening weekend in February. And this is all according to February 7th to 13th. Same actress too in uh, Ozark as well. Yeah. So yeah. Jennifer Gardner. Julia Gardner. Julia Gardner, sorry. Uh, Disney Plus, we have Encanto. And then the Book of Boba Fett are six and seven spots. Uh, Raising Dion, Coco Melian, Coco Melon, and then Criminal Minds on Netflix. Also, okay, so I was wrong. Criminal so. Minds is always up there, I bet. So those are the top ten views. Because Criminal Minds has five hundred episodes. Yes. <laughs> In the minutes watch, yes, yeah, so each one's fifty <laughs> minutes long. So those are the SVOD top ten shows, 
and also Encanto uh, movies in there mm. for the week of February 7th to February 13th, and those are the most recent numbers we have. That's a lot of minutes in a week. And then for movies, it's Encanto, Tender Swindler, Despicable Me, Despicable Me 2, Despicable Me, all these parents just shutting their kids up yeah. with this, <laughs> Despicable well, Me. Well, that's the thing with kids. They like to watch the same movie over and over again. Uh, Tall Girl 2, Home Teen Privilege, Moana, Luca, I Want You Back. And then most minutes viewed is NCIS is number one (laughs) because there's 354 episodes. (laughs) All right. And that's interesting. Yeah. So I think it'd be cool to start going over stuff like that. That was a great idea. Because Nielsen is the best. That's the site in the research. Yeah. Like they research analytics. They do that. And that's that's because I think they're going to have to, the way that they're viewing SVOD ratings, the number one analytic is minutes watched Mm -hmm. versus views. Yeah. Just clicking on it isn't enough. You have to have to have minutes watched. yeah. Yeah. That should be the determining determining factor of whether a show is a hit or not. Which is really interesting because it's a new parameter for yeah. understanding whether people are enjoying a show or not. Exactly. How many minutes of watch does it have? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that ends episode. I mean, movie news episode forty. Lots lots to come this week. We have I, I'm brain dead right now. We have some is cool episodes. Cream? What do we have? I know. What do we have coming out this week? The Batman. Oh, yeah. The Batman. <laughs> <laughs> the Batman. We've been talking about it. So the, tomorrow's going to be the Batman. And then Thursday is Godfather Part 3. We're wrapping that up. I'm sure you could have all guessed that. And then we got some other cool stuff planned as well. I'll yeah. be reviewing Fresh this week as well. So expect that probably Wednesday. I'll for review an audio something review. too. Yeah. Anthony will review like chopsticks or, or like a Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Green Dragon. Green Dragon. Delicious in Eagle Rock. <laughs> Not sponsored. This is real good food. (laughs) All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to subscribe. If you're new, hit the like button, leave a comment. Find us on all audio streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Find us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to check out one of these other videos right here for more content on our favorite films and breaking down all kinds of movie content. Thanks so much.